The U2 is Brian Phillips, Seawind 1.4. It's the plane from Tower Hobbies. They can't decide if it's a seaplane or wheels up, wheels down, pavement plane. Check this out. We've got a functional water rudder and then it transports itself into the world of general aviation on the ground. Look at that, amazing. Steerable nose gear and all. And there we go. So we finally have a chance, now that we have a pond, to share both projects. Here we go. All right, on the mains, this plane is definitely, um, it's a different beast. It's got inboard flaps. They're actuated by a left-right movement by one servo, very strange. It has 3 and safe. Throttle cuts off. The thing taxis well, surprisingly well, and good LEDs. She'll get in the air without too much trouble. Absolutely gorgeously, I might add. Very soft on the sticks right here. I'm gonna actuate the gear where you can see. Look at those LEDs, guys. 50% throttle, 2200 3S gear going up. Oh, that is so sweet. We might need to get one more shot of that. Still take off flaps, as you can see. Pivot's a little bit different than what we're used to. Out of the, little, out of the takeoff flaps now. Look at that thing, absolutely fantastic looking. Gonna bring it out here. A little bit more active flying on this plane than what you're used to. Spongy on the sticks, I just wanna show you this, you guys. You guys see this? Flying it along, look at the gear. Here come the gear. Oh, so sweet. Full landing flaps here. Gear going up. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Okay, so now guys, without further ado, we're gonna fly over the dam runway. The dam runway, of course, is not complete yet, but it's getting there. This plane has good control authority, but it's just a little bit different feel. It feels like tons of expo because the way that the design is, you gotta really watch your feet there, camera crew. Where am I headed? You're headed down so we can fly this off of the water. Look at that, behind the trees, guys. What a beautiful line. What a beautiful plane. Take off flaps here. Now, if you wanna simulate water ops, you can do that, but just remember that water rudder can be released and it releases very easy. It's bit by the head of a Phillips screw and trapped in a corner. Full landing flaps. Now watch this thing, watch this thing. Look at that line, guys. Oh my goodness. I might have a personal issue, that was so gorgeous. So here we go, we're just gonna fly this like normal, just like it's uh, nobody's business. Don't mind the trees in the way. Camera crew's gonna go to the top of the crest of the hill. I'm gonna bring it inside over the trampoline and we're gonna fly from the edge of that knoll, hon. Okay. Hard on the throttle, right over the top of the alfalfa. Going up high just so I can get around these trees. Who needs to see the plane to fly it, right? Guys, when you're brand new as a pilot, if you ever lose sight of your plane, you'll freak out. You get a little bit better, a little bit more skill comes, you'll be able to go behind a tree and uh, know where you headed in and where you're heading out. And that's what I just did there. Take off flaps. Oh man, what a gorgeous line. Gorgeous, gorgeous line. Here it is, right overhead. We're gonna go up over the top of the house. Camera crew's gonna come down on the dam with me. We're gonna go over the top of this tree line and we're gonna land at our destination, which is our brand new pond, folks. I know it seems like we've been kind of playing this up a lot, but it's kind of a, a big deal for us. Oh man, beautiful night. Absolutely calm, lots of rudder to get that turn, take off flaps now. I'm gonna take a different line here, camera crew. You wanna stay where you are, you're fine probably. Okay. I'm kind of right in the middle of okay. the dam. Gear are up. I'm not going to accidentally put them down. Let's practice the approach. Oh my goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Take off laps right over the chairs. And then out. Oh my goodness. What a beautiful place to fly. Boy, oh boy, we are blessed. Hopefully I'm not losing radio, hon. You should be fine. Look at this. Hard on the throttle. Out of the flaps all together. 
flying from the Dan Rumway, takeoff flaps on the way downhill, landing flaps, slowing it down. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal look. Hard on the throttle, takeoff flaps now only. Just a little bit of elevator. This plane will make you feel like it's not gonna do what you want and then you realize, oh, I can just give it more throttle and more elevator. But boy, oh boy, is it good. If you've never experienced a sea wind from Tower Hobby, you should check it out. Links are in the video description below. This is our second thoughts. Oh man, that's gonna be a gorgeous landing when I take it. Why am I so reluctant to take this landing, you might ask? Well, because we haven't flown off of this pond, but once, full landing flaps. I'm taking this if I get it. Camera crew, you got an angle? Mm-hmm. Okay. Out of the throttle, just gliding along. And there it is, guys, out of the throttle. Oh, yes! So gorgeous! Oh, my goodness. Take off flaps now. We're going to turn around and see if the water rudder is effective. And yes, it is, folks. Glass calm. We're going to turn this thing around. And we are going to take back off as we speak. Take off flaps are deployed. Counting on that water rudder, hard, full throttle. Get it up on a plane. There it is. Up she goes. Woo! <laughs> so gorgeous, cycling the gear just to make sure she's all emptied out. And she is back inside they go. Sorry guys, I'm yelling at the camera again. Oh man. So many exciting experiences lately. Full landing flaps now. Let's get an exciting experience in landing here. And it's short, yes! So guys, if you haven't ever experienced the sea wind, I'm just gonna tell you this. The thing flies different than most other planes you've ever had. It's got some strange elevator squishiness to it. But the thing is, I love flying it now. I'm not loving the fact that I gotta go get that right now. But all you have to do is just do a better landing and you won't have to go get it off of your dam. But the truth is, guys, amazing plane, absolutely gorgeous. Don't forget and accidentally try to put your gear out once on the ground. And also note that the water rudder is gone now. The water is popped it out, okay? There's a singular screw that goes in. When the gear are retracted, you'll have to then loosen a Phillips screw and tighten a Phillips screw on top of a pinion or a linkage or something like that, whatever you want to call it. And then that will actuate the water rudder. So it's probably good that I slowed it down perfectly onto the shore. <laughs> now, I gotta say, amazing flight performance. You can land it on land all day long, up and down. You can land it on grass, but you will knock that water rudder out, like I said. Now, you're not gonna break it necessarily, but it's gonna pull that shaft, it's gonna slide off as soon as you have anything less than a stellar landing. So just keep that in mind if you're landing on something like a moving body of water, like a slow moving river or something with, uh, you know, wakes and waves and things like that. Obviously this is very calm. So it should be no big problem. You still have a big effective rudder on the aircraft that will help to control the plane. But as you may have known, if you've ever flown a water float equipped plane, water rudders make a big difference. They really do, especially at slow speeds. So anyway, guys, the sea wind, I'm gonna go get that and come right back and we'll finish the video. All right, folks, so this is what I was talking about. We shorted a little bit there. And you see that, the linkage, when I actuate the gear, you see it slide? See how it push that thing oh, out of the way? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. And I just want you guys to understand that that will happen if you're not careful. Okay? So just be ready for it. And the other thing too is I can definitely tell this thing is dead, like I'm out of juice, oh, okay? Wow. So yeah, <laughs> we noticed our LEDs were flashing. Um, but yeah, see, like it's not changing. So I must've killed it. 3S2200, 
doesn't give you a huge amount of flight time, but I can definitely say at the end of the day, I love this plane, but let's check inside and just see if it got wet because this thing has a goofy, goofy opening on it. This thing lifts up like a canopy and then locks open. Yeah, I can't tell if maybe a little bit of water got in there. AS3X doesn't, nothing seems to be running on it, which the is LEDs very- The LEDs just came back on. Oh, they did? They did, but they're kind of like- So I almost wonder if, stuff. here, we got to pull the uh, decorative chairs out. Mm -hmm. I can't say it's dead necessarily, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering if the thing, if it'll reset when I unplug it. Yeah, it doesn't feel wet where the connector is. So I just unplugged it, plugged it back in. Did you hear the beep, beep, beep? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna do real quick, this thing won't initiate until it's holding still. And so I gotta lay it down, keep the gear switch where it's supposed to be. If you guys ever have AS3X and you're trying to figure out what's going on with the plane, sometimes the best thing to do is just lay it down. Watch, there's the dance, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm not sure if the ESC got splashed a little bit or what, but I can definitely tell you this. I noticed that when I was trying to actuate that for you guys, the main gear didn't come down. So let's do it again. So there go the mains, hypothetically. You'll notice they're not coming down. So that's kind of weird. So I don't know what the deal is. So they went back up. So I'm assuming that there's a linkage that I must have broken or popped out. And I can show you this if you look real careful. Right inside of there. Smoky. Smoking? Mm -hmm. We're smoking, guys. What the heck are we smoking for? Let's see what we're smoking from. Oh yeah, it's down there on the bottom. Down there. Flaps are working. It is definitely the retract servo, guys. The retract servo is smoking. That one's gonna be a fun one to replace. So anyway, guys, we were hoping this would be spawning a beautiful plane but I gotta say, I have no idea even how to get to that servo. Ugh. I think it might've been the Sea Wind's last flight, folks. But let's just say this. I don't even know what I did to kill it, although it was a pretty bad landing. I don't think it was that bad. I don't think it was that bad. So now it's a float plane. Anyway, if you want one and you wanna help me figure out what the heck happened, find it in the links down below and let me know what the heck happened. And when you do surgery on yours for your burned out servo, then you can let me know how to get it out because uh, where's the access? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Where is it? Do you, do you just take off the wings? Look at the smoke. You guys see a top boxing in there. You see that? Look at, oh yeah, there's definitely, that thing is smoking. What a mess. So yeah, I'm not sure what the heck happened, but uh, that, that definitely is the servo. No doubt about it. The flaps are working. Everything rudder wise. Ailerons, rudder, rudder, the throttle cuts off. I'm gonna just give it a little tiny bit. Oh yeah, it's working. Okay. So basically everything is working. But yeah, that servo definitely burned out. So it tries to actuate, like the nose gear actuates, mm -hmm. but it's on a different servo. Yeah, there's a different servo that drives it. That might be a, a serverless retract. But you know what's not? The mains. The mains. There you have it, guys. You're on Brian Phillips first. How to break your sea wind. Now you know. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to support Brian Phillips RC and all the RC habits we have, like that, then all you have to do is look no further than the links in the video description below. Buy the planes from the links. You help support us with small commissions from the companies we work with, in this case, Tower Hobby and uh, Horizon for the Spectrum gear down here, which would be the receiver, we use the AR631, yep. And you can use a 637 in here or you could use something different if you want. But either way, we like the 631 in here because it seems to meet the price point of this plane. But if you wanna have battery telemetry, you could go to 637, which would be nice. Mm -hmm. So that being said, we have links to that. 2200 3S is plenty to power this thing. It's got plenty of power, it's not a powerhouse. You're not gonna have unlimited vertical. You're not gonna be doing tons of 3D. But the truth is, why would you do that with this plane anyway? Yeah. Because really what I'm concerned about is one thing, and that is how in the heck am I gonna replace that servo because I really like this plane. And it really bums me because now I can't use it wheels up, wheels down. But also the servo back there is broke, broke free. 
it's still working, but it's broke free. So maybe if I got that back, we could just call this a dedicated float, float plane. plane. But then how do I pull the gear down? Well, the nose gear is still working. So I can empty any water that gets into that cavity. Now it's gonna drain out mostly on its own anyway. But the truth is some technical challenges, folks. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't know that, this is kind of an older design, okay? So that's part of the reason why, like the, show them the way the flaps are. You see that, that flap servo? Yeah. We don't do stuff like that anymore. Right. Like that's been long since gone. And so it's just kind of, there's a couple of different weirdities about this. So if you watch our unbox build radio setup, you can see all those weirdities. But here on Brian Phillips RC, we love to promote planes that are new and exciting and different. And even though this is, it's new to us, it really is. It may not be new to you. You might've been watching like 10 years ago. It has a lot of upgraded electronics, but evidently one issue still. And that would be something with the mains. And that thing is just sucked tight. Like it's really pulled them tight. So I don't know. And there's definitely smoke. So it's toast. I guarantee it. And that might explain the flickering on the LEDs. So guys, what we do is we show our exact experience. We don't try to make excuses for the manufacturers. We certainly don't try to hide anything because at the end of the day, we don't care which plane you get. As long as you get a good experience and you find something you like, when you buy from Lynx, you do help support us. But the thing is, we really want to propagate this hobby. We love doing this. We love doing it so much that we've turned our property into an aerodrome and we're going to continue to do it. And we've expanded our property three times since we bought it so that we can make a more effective aerodrome. And if you may have noticed, like when we were flying today, I'm still learning this property. I'm still learning the flight lines. I'm still learning where I have to go. We're still deciding there's supposed to be a damn gift shop right here, but you can see today I needed that spot to fly. Yeah. Well, we'll have to make some tough decisions. If it's up high enough, I'll have a hole on this side and a hole on that side. These are the types of things that I think about because we want to bring you guys phenomenal product and a really cool experience. And that's probably why you're going to see a lot of float planes and stuff this summer because because it's brand new it's new and we're learning it and we're learning i noticed we're learning what we need to do next and to do that we have to fly it and learn how it a films lot. and how it flies yep. and get used to it like both the of dock us. like the yep. dock we're getting a dock we're trying to put a dock in in the next two weeks and we don't know exactly where it is because we don't want to interfere with our runway yep so if the runway needs to be here it's it's just totally it, it's calm right now yep. so you can land whatever direction you want when there's prevailing winds going here, we need to make sure we're responding to that. So guys, it takes a lot of thought, a lot of effort, and I hate to admit it, but a lot of money to make all this stuff happen. And so we really appreciate you guys supporting us. The best way you can support us is just buy the planes when you see something you like. If you see something that like, hey, I'm spooked, go ahead and be spooked, buy something different. Yep. Or be spooked understanding what you're gonna be spooked by and then go in prepared so that you can respond to it. Every plane that has an issue, we have found that it's easy to identify and then it's easy to respond to. Sometimes <laughs> you just don't want to respond to them because there's so many of them. It's like, good Lord, I don't want to design the entire plane. In this case, it's kind of a tough one because you're in the middle ground where it's like, can I even get to that servo? I'm sure you could take the wings off. You could take the canopy off. You might be able to get through that clear cover. I'm really not sure. You probably can get it replaced. But I just really don't know. Because some of these servos, I had an Arcus M. That thing had a retractable motor assembly. The motor went up on a boom, ran, shut down, braked, and then collapsed. That was super complicated. And yes, I had lots of problems with it. But I still have that plane. It's held together by hot glue and CA. I can tell you that. But the truth is that plane was super cool. And by the way, after there was a problem with it, the manufacturer replaced it. This is back in the days where I was buying every single thing and I wasn't getting any sponsorships or any of that stuff, whatever you guys want to call sponsorships. But the truth is when we have a plane that has an issue, we want you guys to know about it so that you can make a decision. And it is a value judgment. Some of you are going to be like, no big deal. I'll just get in there and do surgery. Yep. To me, that's probably a deal breaker. To you, it might not be. But we do bring it full disclosure. We love these planes enough to put up with some malarkey, okay? But you might not. And so that's why we're bringing the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us God and we don't puff every plane. Sometimes they puff themselves. <laughs> <laughs> not very often. <laughs> so, but that being said, no, we haven't had a servo catch on fire. No, we haven't had smoke in quite a while. Yeah, I think the last time I know that we had a servo catch on fire was the F-14 Twin 50 from it was a hobby king product years ago 
but I can't remember who actually made it. We had it was one, some like hobby wing or something. Somewhat it was somewhat recently too, but I can't remember what it was. They caught on fire? Yeah, there was smoke. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's probably Doesn't just a mistake. very often. But yeah, it's very unusual that we catch stuff on fire. Yeah. At the end of the day, we want you guys to not catch your thing on fire, unless you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> and if you are, we appreciate you being here. We don't judge. I'm Brian Phillips, RC. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this input will be productive and helpful to you in your next aviation RC experience. Because we sure love bringing it to you. And if you guys enjoyed the video or you learned something from it, or you decided to buy this plane, leave it in the comments below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're burned out on the pond. We're probably still gonna keep doing videos about it. But the truth is at the end of the day, we love our audience. We wanna bring you guys the best we can. We take this stuff serious, seriously serious. And no, we're not just idiots on the street that don't know nothing about this. You know what I mean, Gene? We actually care about this. We understand it. We're trying to get the most out of it. And that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC because we know that's exactly what we need. That was a bat. Oh good, come eat the Get mosquitoes. over here and eat some They're more. over here. So guys, thanks so much for watching. If you wanna support us in other weird ways, we have Patreon for monthly support YouTube members. Thanks to our members. I think we're up to like 54, which is yeah, crazy. Thank you guys. Yeah. And then uh, YouTube super thanks, which is one-time donations and PayPal. If you're not into any of those other things, you don't wanna be on those lists or whatever, we get it. But at the end of the day, we still firmly believe the best way to support us is to just buy amazing products like these chairs right here. <laughs> just the they chairs. come with the airplane. You literally get a Your pair of extra chairs. chairs. There's two of these. There is, that's right. They have two. So I have a back seat and a front seat. I took my back seat out because that's where my receiver went. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're in the mood for some furniture and a catch on fire, you can get them all at once for the low price of whatever the link tells you down below. And there will be boats coming. Lots of yes. people have been asking about boats with the boats. pond. We're working on it. We have already got some footage in the can. You guys don't get too excited. It's coming soon. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, click the bell while you're subscribing so you get notified about new content. We try not to blast out 4,000 videos a week, but we do try to do roughly two long format videos a week, which is more than virtually anybody doing long format right now. There are people doing long format, but it's kind of like short long format. So oh, long, long, long format. format, like toilet wine. No, I mean it. If you're in the pokey, you'll love Brand Phillips RC. <laughs> so shout out to the pokies. Leave it in the comments. All right, that's all you get for tonight. Thanks for watching. Tower Hobbies might have a little bit of work to do on this, but beautiful plane. And I love that you've gone out on a limb to do something new and exciting, even though it's technically not new, it's new to me and I love it yes. because this plane is phenomenal. I just kind of wish we had a serverless retract or something that would not fail or a little bit better serviceability. Fix those two things, V3, we're ready for it. Stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC.